Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Red Wizard and I'm a hand cut collage artist from Buffalo, New York. This video is 10 tips about how to overcome artist's block. Now, I've got a lot of work to do, as I'm sure you, you do, so I'm just gonna do a voiceover of some footage of me working in the studio. I'm working on some seven foot tall monsters I'm making out of collages that I've created using comic books. I'm really excited about it. So let's get into this. I want you to listen very, very carefully. Don't skip this video because you think I'm ugly. Don't skip this video because my audio stinks. Don't skip this video because you would rather watch America's Got Talent. Resistance is the name of our enemy. Resistance is why we have artists block. We must identify our enemy in order for us to beat it. Artists block comes from something called resistance. Resistance is a term coined by Stephen Pressfield in his book, War, The War of Art. I absolutely think this book should be required reading for any artists on this planet. I'll put the link to the book in the description of this video. Resistance is a negative force that tries to stop us from going from a lower sphere of existence to a higher one. We experience resistance when we try to improve our lives. Like gravity, it pulls us all down equally. When we try to go on a diet, change career paths, write a book, be a better person, whenever we try to make our artwork, resistance tries to pull us down. Resistance is also a very cunning, very subtle enemy. For example, I've been trying to make this video for years. This is something I told myself I would do a long time ago. Resistance AKA artist block does not want me to make this video. Resistance doesn't want me to share my insights. Resistance doesn't want me to help you. We're all fish trapped in a net of resistance. If I thrash my tail around enough, I could loosen the net a bit and a few of you, my fish friends, will be able to get out of the resistance net. But resistance doesn't want that. Resistance is not gonna say you'll never make your artwork. It will just tell you, ah, you'll do it tomorrow. Let me tell you a bit about myself. In 2017, I decided I was going to get serious about making my art. I had just spent the last 10 years very eloquently making tons of excuses for myself. I practically removed all art making from my life, despite going to college for art for four years. Once I started making art every day, I had just turned 30. I was starting a new career as a teacher. I was taking classes at night. I had a wife who was a medical resident who was working around the clock, and I had a new baby girl at home. Since then, we've had two more children. My wife and I both work full time, and I've never been so busy in my life. It's bananas how crazy I am, yet I'm still making more artwork in a month than I did in my entire decade of my 20s. Am I, an, am I an authority on overcoming artist block? No. But I've been busting my ass for the past five years trying to beat resistance every day. All right, here's my 10 tips. I'm going to start with my favorite art quote. Inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just show up and get to work. That's by Chuck Close. Let's get into it. Tip number one, perfectionism is poison. The most important thing you need right now is a mindset shift. If you're an artist, your job is to make art. Your job is not to be an art critic. I'll say it again. Your job is to make art. Your job is not to be an art critic. Thoughts of perfection are toxic, if not downright lethal. Perfection is a lie. It's just another way to procrastinate. You'll tell yourself, you'll tell yourself I'm not ready. I haven't done this yet. I haven't done that yet. It's not ready. No. I've been making collages for five years every day. I still don't have a quote style, and I certainly haven't perfected my process. The ancient yogis 
describe yoga as a union of the individual soul with the supreme soul. But here's the kicker. Yoga is also the act, the exercise, the meditation, the prayer, meaning union is the work. When you make your art, you're doing your job. End of story. Leave the results to the gods. Tip number two, you have time to make your artwork. If you say you don't, it's just not important to you yet, and that's fine. If you really want something, nothing will stop you from trying your hardest. You need to want it like a drowning man wants air, or like a robber who's broken into a house and has gone through door after door after door, and he's finally at that safe with one last lock to pick. Will that robber stop there? Absolutely not. You have time to make your artwork. Tip number three, set yourself a time and place to make your artwork. This is how I got started. If you want to make something, you're a maker. Making is your work. Treat your work like any important job. Give yourself a dedicated time and place to do your work every day. Even more important is the place. Designate a place in your home that is only for your art. Make a small studio in your basement or even just a corner of your bedroom. Treat it like a sacred place. Even if all you have is a small desk, dedicate that place to only art making. Don't put your hobby on, don't, don't put your bills on top of it, okay? Treat it like a temple. You wouldn't wear pajamas and fill out your tax forms at church, so don't do it in your studio. After you keep this up for a while, your art space will feel like an art battery. It will store your ideas, it will store your work and your inspiration, and when you sit down, you'll be zip, zip, zoom, ready to go. Set yourself a time and place to make your work. Tip number four, limit yourself. Wide open expanses can be terrifying. Have you ever been on a boat in the middle of the ocean surrounded in a dense fog? It's horrible. I personally never made any progress in my work until I put a huge limit on myself. I decided to make only collage. That's what I had to do. If that sounds scary, think of it this way. If your goal is a destination, let's say you want to get to Boston, how will you get there? You can't ride a bike and drive a car at the same time. A bike and a car will get you there just fine, but you have to choose one. If you're just starting out, give yourself a simple daily exercise. Sign on to a process and see where it takes you. For example, recently I wanted to learn about tarot cards. So each day I'm drawing one tarot card with one type of pen and I will do this every day until the deck gets done. Where am I going with this? I have no idea, but the process will show me. Limit yourself. Tip number five. Failure is not bad. Failure is proof of work. Everything that we do is an experiment. About two years ago, oh my God, I cringe just thinking about this. Two years ago, I printed about 300 posters of my artwork. A friend of mine owns some local head shops, so I figured my surreal artwork would be a good fit for the patrons there. I decided to build a custom poster display out of wood. I had never worked with wood before, and this wood stand took me all summer to make. It was a huge time and money sink. Guess how many posters I sold out of that stand in a year? I don't know, maybe, I think four? People go to my friend's shop to pick up, you know, a, a pack of smokes, something like that, maybe a lottery ticket, okay? Not artwork. My younger self would have been a baby and quit right there. But not me, not now. When you fail at something, it just proves that you did something. You learn more valuable lessons in failure than success. Failure is not bad. 
failure is proof of work. Tip number six, do not expect anything in return. The most pathetic thing we can do is to make something and immediately expect accolades, publication, a gig, or money. Your friends and family are not going to understand why you make art. You barely understand it. Why would they? Your prize for finishing your art is a blank canvas the next day. Remember, your job is to make art, not to be an art critic. When your work is fire, you won't have to ask people about their opinions or approval. They will give it to you gladly. But it's got to be fire first. Don't expect anything in return. Tip number seven, have fun and enjoy the process. If you're like me, you're going to be making your art after a long work day or before a long work day and after plenty of other responsibilities. You're going to be tired. Let's be clear. Artwork is work. It's much easier to play video games and pretty much damn, do damn near anything else. In order to push through, you have to be working on something that you love or interests you. Which, by the way, this becomes part of your internal editing process. You won't know you dislike a project until you try making it. Don't feel bad for projects. Move on if you need to. Or, if you get sick of something, just switch gears for the day and try something else if you must. Have fun and enjoy the process. Tip number eight. When in doubt, tidy up. This is an idea I got from a wonderful book called Steal Like an Artist. Uh, this is very good advice. Sometimes when you go into your studio, you're going to feel stuck, confused, or just too tired to work. This is a perfect time to tidy up your workspace, get things organized. You'll be surprised how uh, therapeutic this is. And uh, you know what? It's still work. It's something you have to do in the first place. When in doubt, tidy up. Tip number nine. Keep a journal. Write a little bit every day. See, you've probably already felt some resistance when I said oh, write a little bit every day. Did your butt just clench? Honestly, this is something I started doing recently. It's an idea called a morning check-in. The first thing I do in the morning before I make my art is I write for about eh, 15 minutes. Writing forces you to kind of take your thoughts out of the ether and make them concrete. Try this practice um, every day for a few days. And you'll be surprised um, pretty soon it's going to absolutely help you navigate any confusion. And you'll begin to articulate your intentions and your goals much better. This monster, this monster project I'm working on right now is absolutely a result of me journaling. I was just kind of, you know, typing. I was lamenting that I grew up loving like sci-fi monsters. And that's why I wanted to become an artist and... I haven't been making any, and but I don't know how to as a collage artist. And I wrote it out, I don't know, a day or two later, it just kind of came together. I was like, wow, yeah, I'm not making monsters. Let's make some monsters. I, I would, I, I'd never got there until I started writing. I wish I would have started writing five years ago. And please approach your journal like I'm asking you to approach your artwork. Just use it as a learning tool. Use it as an experiment. Your job is to make the artwork. It's not perfection, okay? It's very likely no one's gonna publish your journal. Just write it out. Use it as a tool for understanding. All right, tip number 10. This is a biggie. You're gonna hate me for it, but I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to tell you to do your work. Tip number 10, keep a calendar. Look. I need you to take a knife, a metaphor, ladies and gentlemen. I need you to kill this romantic idea of the bohemian artist who drifts around like Jack Kerouac or some other beatnik and just does art when they feel inspired. Most of us are not powerful enough to just wing our day. We can't just wing it. The fairies are not going to come and whisper in your ears. If, if that's been working for you, then you... You shouldn't even be watching this art video, this video. It's not going to work. Keep a calendar. Artwork is work. Treat it like work. You wouldn't show up half an hour late to work. 
you wouldn't just glance at your schedule and be like, oh yeah, I'll remember that. Schedule your times that you will be making your artwork and stick to it. And add your other fun art stuff in there too. If you have an idea to go to a gallery, put it in the calendar. Do you have an idea to uh, go to the park and sketch the trees? Give it a time and a place and a date. This morning I told myself I had it scheduled in my Google Calendar to go to the woods and sketch some of the swamp plants um, before winter makes them crumble. It stinks outside. It's dark. All i got to do is drag and drop that little uh, calendar item to another day. It's there. It's concrete. It's going to happen because it's on my calendar. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm the Red Wizard. If you need to buy any art supplies, please visit my Amazon affiliate link. Um, I get a little kickback from Jeff Bezos uh, and his uh, Space Force uh, career that he's starting. Also, um, please visit my store. I have prints and other merch for sale there. This is the Red Wizard. It's 6.45 in the morning, Sunday, October 31st. 2021 on Spaceship Earth. Signing out. Go make some artwork.